Hello guys, welcome, I'm SimUK and this is my tutorial and guide on how to add mods to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now it's not the most straightforward procedure in the world, there's a bit of tweaking and stuff you have to do, but ultimately if you follow this guide you should be up and running without too many difficulties at all. So today I'm just going to show you one mod, it's Stonehenge, obviously I'm sure everybody on the planet has heard of Stonehenge, it's quite famous, yet it doesn't really appear in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. So let's go right ahead and make sure that it looks about right. So the first thing you need to do is to go to Options, come down here to General, click on Developers, and turn this on. Now what this will do will give you this little bar across the top. So hit Apply and Save. If we go to Tools and come down to Virtual File System, and then scroll down to Watched Bases, this effectively tells Microsoft Flight Simulator where to look for your mods. So this link here will be different depending on whether you have a Steam installation or Microsoft Store installation. So just make sure that you have this information available to you so that you can navigate to it and accept it. So Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on.org is a, a good location to pick up mods at the moment. There's going to be a lot more in the future, I'm absolutely certain of that. So it's quite nicely organized with planes, liveries, airports, plugins. There's even a forum. And also Nexus Mods. Now Nexus Mods, I have to say, is my favorite location for Microsoft Flight Simulator mods at the moment. There's quite a few on there already, and a lot of them are really, really high standard. So definitely go check those out. So I would recommend that you create a folder somewhere where you can download and save all of your community mods. You can see I've just got a selection of them here. Now what you're going to have to do to get to the app data file structure is just type app data like this into your uh, search bar and it will open up the app data roaming location. So go back one space so that you can see this file structure and then we're going to go into the local file and what we need to do when we get there is locate where the Microsoft Flight Simulator location is going to be for mods. Now you can do this in a variety of ways but by far the easiest way to do this is to copy the link I have in the description below and what you do is just paste that in after packages and then it should open it up. If you look in the community folder you can see it's empty so if we take a copy of that create a shortcut to it and then cut that shortcut out close that down and paste that shortcut into the community mods folder we just created. Now what you'll notice is because it's from the Microsoft Store you'll get this error or information pop up just say yes it's fine and then you should be able to just click on this folder and it takes you straight to that community folder so now all we have to do is drop and extract all of the mods that we want to see in there and uh, they should be in there and ready to go now you have to do this whilst microsoft is not running obviously and every time you add new ones you'll have to restart microsoft flight simulator so if we just chuck everything in there like this and extract the lot then at the end of the video I'll show you how you remove mods as well it's a very simple process basically you're just going to go in and delete it but I'll show you how I do that and uh, let's go and have a look and see so you can see all the files go in there pretty straightforward now one thing you might notice is that with this uh, dev bar turned on there's a few little options and you know this is for development test the FPS display thing might be something that you're interested in looking at, but my gosh, is it slightly bright. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Basically, I would recommend you don't really mess about with any of that. Once you've got that location, you can simply turn this bar back off again. It doesn't need to be on in order for mods to work. It's just a way to identify where your mods folder is going to be. Uh, because every system is going to be slightly different, so it's just a really easy, simple way to get accurate information about where your mods folder is located. So once you've got that set up, you can close that down if you wish. So if we go into world map, obviously we want to use the search function and we want to go to Stonehenge. Now it surprises me astronomically that Stonehenge is not in the list. I really think it should be. It's probably one of the most famous places on the planet. So what we can do is just go to Google Maps. So if we go to Google Maps, we can click on the map itself. It'll put this little icon in. And at the bottom here, you can see we've got the coordinates. So if you copy those and then paste them up here in the actual Google search function, then you'll see that we get the proper created link here. These are the coordinates 
in a, written in a way that Microsoft Flight Simulator can understand. Copy those over and paste them in. Now, rather annoyingly, if you click on the search bar, it doesn't do anything. So what you have to actually do is scroll down and click on this custom icon here. And that'll take you straight to the location. Click as set departure, and you'll see that it becomes the departure location. Now, one thing that you can't do here at least but on some places you can start on the ground so here we'll be airborne at zero feet which is a bit odd but uh, it just about does the job so here we are coming up on the infamous stonehenge and uh, i think you'll agree it looks pretty good now i'll give it a quick flyover so you can see the surrounding area great focus has been placed on the fact that trees have been removed from this area which is in keeping with real life and there she is look absolutely stunning now we're going to go take a slightly closer look for a few reasons Ooh, all that terrible landing but uh the first thing you'll notice is that the ground levels don't match up perfectly now this is just <clears throat> this is something that doesn't really matter that much it's a tweaky thing but uh, you can see there's quite a, a noticeable look there so if we take a closer look at stonehenge itself i think you can agree that that's certainly acceptable now it's not perfect if you look at some of the stones you can see that they're hollow some of them don't align quite right but overall i think it's giving a very decent very honest very fair reflection of the uh, of the model itself of stonehenge itself and i think it looks absolutely fantastic now if you're wondering what it looks like without the mod installed well there it is it's really quite embarrassing what Microsoft Flight Simulator has done there. This is, you know, almost one of the seven wonders of the world, you could say. It's, it's quite an iconic location. And uh, I'm really disappointed that Microsoft didn't do more. And I suspect it's an area that they might address at a later time, but maybe they left it open for third-party developers to deal with. But thankfully, we have got a fantastic community um, behind Flight Simulation. And this is one of the brilliant aspects of flight simulation is that this free mod just enhances this so much. Now I spoke to you earlier about how you can remove mods, you just literally, literally go into that uh, community folder and delete them, nothing difficult at all. So if you would like to download this mod, go to Nexus Mods and, uh, and search for the Stonehenge HD version. No Google, that's the version I'm using here. It's uploaded by Keki92 or Kek92. And uh, yeah, massive shout out to Kek for creating this and um, really appreciate it. I think he's done a great job. Maybe he'll enhance it a little bit more, just sort out those few tiny little problems. But ultimately, I think it's a fantastic mod. It doesn't take up too much space. It just improves everything in this area a hundred percent if not more and um yeah i couldn't be happier with it thanks for watching take care of yourselves until next time goodbye <laughs>